Hey, it's Cynthia with Supplier Community. We are so lucky today to be joined by Andrew Thornton, grocery store founder in the UK of Thornton's Budgeons. They are a small boutique grocery store in Belsize Park. If you're familiar with London, they're right across from the tube station. Um, and he has recently undertaken a massive um, change in packaging in his store. It is one store, it is a boutique store, but he is out to change the world. Andrew, tell us your story. My longer term story is I, I, I kind of, I was a, a consultant who had a midlife crisis about 10 years ago and bought two supermarkets as a result of it, which is a slightly obscure way to um, deal with a midlife crisis. And what I've realized over that time is that really my purpose is all around influencing business leaders to do things differently. Uh, I call it business with a heart, but it's ultimately taking a different approach. And it's more looking at the whole issue of stakeholder value, looking at, you know, your customers, your suppliers, your community, your, but the environment as well, instead of just looking at, at, at shareholders. Um, so we have done in my, my London supermarket in Thornton's Budgets, we have done many things in the environmental space. And last year we have become very aware with Blue Planet 2, the David Attenborough documentary, uh, really bringing to, to the fore of people's customers' attention the whole plastic issue. And as I was contemplating, and I'd met, met an organization called the Plastic Planet, who we ended up working with to tackle this. But as I was contemplating that, I took some time out in the US over the summer. I was doing some training, um, leadership training. And prior to that, I went to have a week uh, beforehand to kind of relax and, and, and uh, just let things go. I went to a visit place called Smith Island off the coast of Maryland. Um, the intention being to have a kind of relaxing week, just doing very, very little. Uh, and I'm a kind of crazy Irishman and I have to go and swim all the time, all year round. In fact, even though it's December, I was swimming in the Hampstead Ponds here in London this morning. So I arrived in Smith Island, I asked somebody, where would I, where's the best place to swim? He said, go there. I jump on the bike that was with the house, go straight into the sea. And it, you know, I didn't have a good feeling. The water didn't feel clean and it was the ocean and this is supposed to be a nature reserve. But, you know, and, and somewhere in, on, on, the, on the, the swim, I, I must have stood, I think I stood in a crab shell or something, but didn't think more of it. Got back to our little cabin. And after a while, my foot started to swell up a bit. And I won't go through all the, 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 the minute eye of detail, but this island has no doctor, no nurse. And I ended up, as this got worse and worse, on a Skype call with a doctor on the mainland who said they sent some antibiotics over. That didn't happen, that got delayed, and it kind of got worse. And so within 24 hours, um, there was a nurse on the island and, and, and my partner was really quite concerned. So she called the nurse again for the second time. And the nurse came around and she said, oh my God, we need to deal with that. And, and I was airlifted off the island into a hospital um, on the mainland and spent 48 hours on a drip um, having really heavy duty antibiotics. And effectively what happened was the sea was so poisoned with toxic whatever produced by human beings. And it's not necessarily just to do with plastic, but all the, the, the I'll use the word crap that we pump into the sea as humans was so toxic that I, um, I ended up in this position. And when I got back to the island afterwards, one of the guys who'd been a, one of the volunteer uh, firemen who'd, who kind of lifted me on the stretcher into the helicopter, said, oh, it's, it's really good to see, you You know, you didn't lose a leg because, you know, that ocean's pretty toxic. And that if I hadn't been decided at that point that we were, you know, we were going to do something about plastic, that was, that pushed me over the edge. And I got back to the UK on the 1st of September and we made a commitment, this is 2018, we made a commitment that we would launch 1,500 plastic-free products by early November, um, which was like 10, 10 weeks or so. Um, and we did. In fact, we launched 1,800 products. Um, as I mentioned, we work with an organization called The Plastic Planet, which is a social enterprise that's committed to turning off the plastic tap. And we really did this for three reasons. One, we wanted our customers in Belsize to have the chance to shop with less plastic packaging. Secondly, we wanted to reduce the amount of plastic our store put into the environment. But most importantly, we wanted to influence the major players to do something different to show that if little Olas with one store in North London could actually do this, 
take out this many products in 10 weeks, then surely what could a Walmart or a Tesco or a Carrefour with all their resources do? So that's the kind of that's kind of what we, we did. That is tremendous. That's an amazing story. And I love that you had some personal experience with environmental change and toxicity and the problems with our oceans. That is um, a big deal. Uh, a lot of people, it's so remote. Um, a lot of people will never go into the ocean and they'll never experience anything like that. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty big motivator. Uh, thank you for sharing that story with us. You have two stores in London. Did you do this in both of your stores? No, I used to have two. I have one now. Um, okay. I carelessly lost one of them to competition. Um, and actually, that was a good thing with hindsight, because with the one store, it's really allowed me to focus on this heart centered approach to doing business, um, which has turned up upside down how we actually uh, are as an organization. And I think the approach we take to being more authentic, being more of ourselves um, has actually helped us to do this in 10 weeks, because really it was pretty much an impossible task what we set out to do. Um, so we, we did that and we did that by taking plastic out in three, three sort of ways. First of all, we took all the categories that we were packing ourselves or we had influence on packaging uh, and addressed those. So for example, uh, the first thing we did was we looked at areas which we were, we had control over ourselves. So produce is a great example. Um, we, about 40% of our produce was, was loose and 60% pre-packed. We shifted that to 85% loose um, because that's something we could control. And we, yeah, we did that um, pretty much overnight. Um, we then looked at other areas, for example, bread. Bread that we bake in store or got from local artisan bakers was all put into aerated plastic sleeves. We changed that into paper. Um, with our fish counter, we used to, like most fishmongers, wrap, wrap it in a bit of paper and then put it in a plastic bag. We then upgraded the quality of the paper into a wax paper, and then we folded that, sealed with the, the, the paper price label, and therefore we didn't need to use a, a paper bag, a plastic bag. Um, and a bunch of other things around the store. We also then started to use compostable packaging, packaging to, to wrap our cheese uh, and so on. The second area then was we went seeking suppliers, manufactured suppliers who produce plastic free packaging. Um, and we were amazed working with the plastic plant, how many mostly smaller niche companies were producing plastic free packaging. Um, and that could be anything from teas and coffees to deodorants and soaps, um, cereal products, and so on, a whole raft of products, mostly as I said, from small niche new manufacturers. Um, nothing from the big major manufacturers as yet. And then the third thing we did was we re-merchandised the store to bring all the plastic free products together in zones. We have 28 zones in the store that are plastic free. So that people could really see if, if you wanted a plastic free shop, you could then go around and choose your groceries from those 28 zones. And it's possible to do a full shop for your family um, plastic free if you're prepared to make a few sort of tweaks. Maybe the very specific type of cheese you wanted is not available in plastic free but you know you, there's certainly a whole raft of cheeses that are available um, and then the the more recent thing we've done is uh, just over six weeks ago we launched our zero packaging section where we have a whole range of products where you basically are box sold and you bring ideally you bring your own container back uh, you continuously refill those containers although we have paper bags to help people in the process get started and that is things you might expect like nuts and, and grains and pulses those sort of things but we have spices so we have a jar where you can scoop out you know fresh coriander seeds in a perfect world you might bring the little schwartz bottle you've used with coriander before and kind of refill it um we have got um washing powders you know detergents um soaps we've got shampoos conditioners bath foam um we also then have things like olive oils and balsamic vinegars. We have a milk machine, which is my personal favorite, where you can bring your own bottle or one of our, our reusable bottles and fill up with a liter of organic milk from a local farm, which is, it tastes, the product tastes exquisite compared to the bottles 
um, product is just fresher and more alive. And we have a water machine as well, so you can fill up bottles of water still and sparkling with a very scientific osmosis system so that the quality of water is, is, is better than most bottled waters. Um, so we're up to 2,602 products the last time we counted it. And, and I guess one of the big challenges in my interest in, 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 in sharing my story here is that we need the, the supplier community, the mainstream supplier community to really engage with us now. Um, to take this to the next stage. Um, I know certainly Unilever have made some very big commitments and announcements and are really taking this seriously. And I'm hoping that other of the big branded manufacturers start to, to look at this. Um, and there is a whole thing about uh, what is the best way to package things. Zero packaging for me is a great solution because if you switch it out of plastic into glass, that's got issues for environmental and carbon footprint point of view. Um, but ultimately, it's what is the best solution and how do we move away from this throwaway society where you wrap something in plastic that may be, you know, particularly fast food, you know, you put it in plastic, it stays in plastic for like less than five minutes and then that, that, that plastic's tucked away and it, it goes, stays forever because it never gets, um, it never breaks down. And certainly the numbers in the UK is only 9% of plastic is recycled in the UK. And I think the US, um, and Canadian numbers are not dissimilar to that. So that's kind of, so we're on a mission. And, and the, the amazing thing is that pretty much every major player in the UK, many from Europe, many from North America and, and as far as Asia have come to see what we're doing. So I think we have achieved our, our primary aim, which is to influence the industry to make a step change. Sadly, in the UK, we have a, uh, an EIA Greenpeace report that's been done every year for the last three years on supermarket use of plastic. And it came out about two weeks ago and it showed despite all the commitments and all the big statements that, that all the big players have made about plastic, the amount of plastic in UK supermarkets went up in the, in the most recent year. And a couple of notes of the exception, both Tesco, Sainsbury, and I think one other, it's marginally reduced their amount of plastic, but it was very marginal. So really what customers are saying to me is actually it's all greenwash. You know, the statements for the big retailers are just, they don't mean anything because in reality we're continuing to use more plastic. I, I want to ask, in, in your experience, where does this start? Does it start at the individual consumer level or does it need to start with the suppliers? Does it need to start with the, the store, the retail level? Uh, where does this change start? I know where it started with you, um, but in a country as big as, as the United States or even greater um, in, in the UK, where, where does that start? Is it consumers getting upset and demanding the change or is it with retailers or is it with suppliers leading the charge? My answer is it's all of the above. Okay. So and my message to consumers is if you care about this, then stop buying plastic and start going to places that give you that option. They are few and far between, but they're growing. Um, the number of sort of unpackaged stores that have opened in the UK in the last year is about 60, I think. So, you know, those sort of stores. Um, so if you're a consumer, care about it, be vocal, um, vote with your, with your dollar, your purse, um, get on social media, start making a fuss about it, start really, you know, highlighting those that are doing a good job. If you're a retailer or a manufacturer, my view is that there is a, there the climate change, plastic, all these things that is actually an opportunity because customers, more and more customers really want to do the right thing. When we launched our plastic free zones last year, we had a 4% uplift in our total store sales. Now, in grocery food retailing, 4% is a huge uplift um, and people spend millions and millions of pounds or dollars um, and not get getting doing things that get you less of an uplift than that. So uh, we have proven what I, I believe to be the case, the customers care about this. So I believe that there is a huge prize for major retailers. So the first, in individual markets, be it the US, the UK, be it France, the first major player who takes a big bull move and says, we are gonna do something really serious about this. And it's not, my customers are saying most of the, the, the statements by the UK players have all been greenwashed. Oh yeah, by 2097, we're going to do this and that and the other, or by, you know, it's so far away and the target is so nebulous. And so many of them saying, well, we're gonna make sure all our stuff is recycled by 2025. But that's no good because only 9% of plastic is recycled in the UK. So you can make it recyclable, 
but the recycling system doesn't work. So I have a view that the, the first major retailer in individual markets who make a move will get a substantial commercial benefit. And I think with suppliers, the same thing applies. If you are the first candy manufacturer or the first coffee manufacturer to get into this and you get your products presented and you get your message out there, those customers who want to do this will buy your product at the expense of other people. So we all have a responsibility here. But ultimately, the biggest responsibility, in my view, the whole climate change issue lies with business. Because government, you know, the government in, in, in your country and the country of which I'm not from but live in in the UK are, well, the less said about that. They are not, I mean, you know, your president is a climate change denier. Um, you know, we've just had a general election. Climate change was barely mentioned in that. So governments are not going to deal with this problem. So businesses need to. And as I said, I believe it's a, it's a real commercial opportunity for businesses. Because those who deal with this whole area, and I put plastic under the whole umbrella of climate change or climate crisis, those who do will thrive as businesses. Uh, and those who don't, will, in my view, will go out of business. They will become irrelevant to customers. They'll become the Kodak, uh, the Kodak of, the, of this, uh, this decade we're about to start. That's a good analogy. Um, what is your message to someone um, in a decision-making capacity who dismisses all of this and says, you know, it's easy to do this in an upscale store, in an upscale, upscale part of the world where money is almost no object for your shoppers? What is your message to someone who has to be conscious of their shopper's budget and, and maybe can't go with the expensive packaging or non-packaging? Well, first of all, money is not no object to my customers. Um, they are, you know, thanks to the, the, the likes of Aldi and Lidl, um, even my very affl affluent customers, some of which are, some of which are, you know, very high net worth individuals, still care about value. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be more expensive. So wrapping our bread in paper is no more or less expensive than wrapping in plastic. And certainly having products loose, so all our zero packaging products um, are less expensive than the, the packaged alternative. So our milk, um, one litre of milk is 25% cheaper than Yo Valley, which is the leading brand in organic milk product. So in fact, there is a commercial, there's a, you know, for, our, for people who are looking for value for money, this is, this, does, this is not just about being much more expensive. Some of the, the brands we've launched, the plastic free brands, are niche brands and they are premium brands and they are expensive and so my message to the big branded manufacturer is you know get your products out of plastic and come up with other solutions and there's real innovation required i i was with the ceo of one of the biggest uh, players in the uk who's really good grocery players he was really last week he was really grappling with this and there's a lot of challenges but actually by engaging by the suppliers and the retailers engaging together and saying, okay, how do we deal with this? How do we together come up with solutions? Um, I, I, I believe if, if all the, a lot of energy on both sides is put into this, there are solutions to this. There absolutely are. So I don't think it's just an upmarket niche uh, thing. I mean, it's a great place to try it in. You know, it's, it, it certainly makes it easier in some respects. But I, I think this is all applicable to every single demographic. Um, uh, right across the world and I know for example you know if you look at India one of the biggest issues in India is these sachets food sachets that are uh, that are and I went on a leadership walk in India with some CEOs this time last year and around the uh, along a river and actually there weren't things like plastic bottles around because they have some value and um, there were there was the, the sauce sachets there were crisp packets and there were uh, chewing tobacco packets because those are things that are perceived not to have a value so i think we all have a responsibility to do something about this and as i said those who deal with it will will thrive and those who don't will die andrew's going to join us in early 2024 a webinar all about packaging and sustainability so make sure to keep your eye to your email and of course always for more information on anything we do our website supplier.community